This lesson is an introduction to risk in auditing. In this lesson, you will learn what audit risk is and why it matters to auditors. You will also learn how auditors evaluate the drivers of risk. These three drivers are inherent risk, control risk, and detection risk. So let's start with what risk is in an audit. Risk, audit risk, is the chance the auditors issue the wrong opinion at the end of the audit. There are two ways that auditors might issue the wrong opinion. The first is that the auditors conclude the financial statements are materially misstated when the financial statements are actually not materially misstated. That is, the auditors say there's a problem, but the auditors are wrong. There is no problem. The second way auditors might be wrong in issuing an opinion is that they conclude the financial statements are not materially misstated when they in fact are materially misstated. So why does risk matter? Well, it should seem intuitive to you that it's a problem for auditors to issue the wrong audit opinion. The chances are that issuing a wrong audit opinion will cost auditors losses of lo lawsuits, higher future insurance premiums, and probably the chance to hire some additional customers. So there are reputational effects from issuing the wrong audit opinion. You should also understand that auditors choose the level of risk they accept. The more risk you accept, the more chance you're willing to take that you get the wrong opinion, the fewer audit procedures you need to perform. So at the limit, if you want to be 100% accurate in your answer at the end of the audit, every single transaction of the client for the year has to be audited, and it has to be audited correctly. And this, of course, is impossible. Auditors always accept somewhere between a half and one percent risk of getting the wrong answer. They might sometimes go up to five percent chance of getting the wrong answer. But they, it, they never would go as far as saying there's a 50-50 chance that they have the wrong answer at the end of the audit. How do auditors decide on the level of audit risk they'll accept? Well, we tend to accept more risk when the client is not publicly held and not in a regulated industry. The reason for this is that there are fewer people who will be able to or will have to rely on the financial statements that we audit. If it's a publicly held company, there are all those shareholders who will be relying on the financial statements and all potential investors who will rely on financial statements that we audit. And if we give a wrong audit opinion, that can be millions of people who relied on audited financial statements and we gave the wrong answer in the end of the audit. Auditors also accept more risk when trying to draw new clients by making low bids because business development is a very important part of being an audit partner, audit partners sometimes will take more risky clients on, clients for whom the audit is more difficult in some ways, in order to expand the business. Audit firms understand that those types of clients have more risk associated with them. That is, there's more chance of giving an incorrect audit opinion at the end of the audit of a new client than there is of an existing or continuing client. According to the auditing standards, audit risk is affected by three elements that we're going to discuss in subsequent slides. Those three elements are inherent risk, control risk, and detection risk. Let's start with inherent risk. This is the chance that the client's financial statements are misstated due to features of the company and its transactions. You could read about inherent risk in the textbook. 
some of the drivers in, of inherent risk are shown on this slide. Complexity in the level of transactions has a big effect. Think about transactions for a company that's a one-person barber shop that only accepts cash in exchange for one kind of service. Those transactions are not hard to account for. And then think of a multinational firm that's selling on the internet and engaging in hedge transactions and all kinds of different business combinations. The more complex the level of transaction, the harder it is to get the accounting right. And the harder it is to get the accounting right, the higher the inherent risk for the client. The training and education level of the client employees is also a driver of inherent risk. If they have all CPAs working in their accounting department, you would presume that the education level and training level is very high and you're much less likely to get accounting errors. The methods of accounting the client chooses to use may be driven largely by different judgments that the client has to make. The more judgments, the more chance there is that the client can make errors. And finally, compensation schemes linked to financial outcomes are thought to drive inherent risk because these kinds of schemes, salary and bonuses driven by financial statement outcomes, give people an incentive to misstate their financial statements. So let's move on to control risk. Control risk is the chance the client's internal control system fails to prevent or detect financial statement misstatements. So inherent risk varies from high to low. If there's low inherent risk, the client doesn't have very complicated transactions and has lots of good accountants working for it and probably does not generate very many financial statement errors. The control risk for that client then is the company's response to how many errors it thinks it has. Does it put a good system in, in place, strong system in place, and how hard it is to put a good and strong system of internal controls in place is largely a result of how much training they do on controls, whether they monitor control compliance, whether the system is effectively designed and it's updated regularly and has processes that are necessary to detect those financial statement misstatements. A strong control system provides low control risk, low chance that the, that the client system fails to find the problems. Detection risk is the third element of audit risk. Inherent risk and control risk are not controllable by the auditor. The auditor evaluates client inherent risk and client internal control risk. Detection risk is different. It's set by the auditors. It's the chance the auditors take that their procedures fail to detect financial statement misstatements. Of course, you realize that we can't prevent client misstatements, but we can detect them with our audit. So how do the elements of the risk model relate to each other? Well, detection risk rises. The chance we're willing to take that our audit does not find problems goes up when inherent risk falls. That is, we don't think there are very many errors to find, and vice versa. Detection risk rises, that is, the chance we're willing to take that our audit does not find problems, rises if the client's control risk falls, that is, the client has better controls. We do fewer audit procedures when we think the This ends this lesson.